This is a double wide fix video. That's right. And this is the, the big thing. And you guys might not know what this is. They might not know, but you know what it is. What is it? It's a microwave. It's a type of microwave. A microwave? What is it? I don't know. It's like a modern grandfather clock. Yeah, it's like a modern. What is it? This is a cuckoo clock microwave and... A microwave cuckoo clock. And you can see, don't knock it over. And don't knock it over. Or it will break. Or it will break. Then you'll have to throw it in the garbage. Yeah, that's probably what we should have done to begin with. Alright, not too bad. And done. Hey guys, Double Wide Six here. And, uh... Wasn't really planning on making a video, but I'm going to make you a little video on today's project. It's kind of a uh, miserable day out. It was uh, rainy. Now it's cold out. And uh, I'm just kind of in the garage doing a little bit of work. And um, I had uh, a microwave that I had uh, taken apart because I used a transformer to make a spot welder out of that microwave. And uh, I can show you spot welders right here so that's a look at that and I do have a video on that if you're interested and um, I've had all these parts kind of laying around and I got to thinking like it would be kind of nice to have a little digital clock in the garage I, I do have a clock out here which is up here and as you can see you wouldn't know it but it's got the wrong time because the battery's dead and that thing I actually made in uh, eighth grade. That was a shop project. Uh, it's supposed to be a soccer ball clock. And um, I decided that I'd take this panel from the microwave and see if I could get it to light up. And I do have it working. And uh, you know, I usually, like from the pool, I bring this clock in usually each year just to get out of the weather for the winter that one's normally outside but during the summer I don't have a clock so that's why I thought it'd be cool to make a little digital clock so this is actually a GE Space Saver microwave and uh, I was trying to figure out how to wire up the the board to make the clock and um, I ran into uh, uh, an instructable I think it is like an online thing that had some pictures and it showed how you could take one of these panels and you could uh, wire like an outlet and uh, make that outlet a timed outlet and I thought that looked pretty cool so I wanted to figure out how to make the clock work and then also I could uh, make the outlet if if I wanted to the problem was it wasn't for a GE microwave and if you know anything about modern day electronics they're kind of really hard to figure out. So I took a look at the the board that was on the the back of the panel and uh, I really couldn't figure out what was going on and then I was lucky enough to find the directions they were kind of stuffed underneath the uh, the panel on the back side so this has a schematic of all the electricity and um, basically um, I was able to figure out from the filter board how the uh, electricity runs and you know I, I determined a few things first of all where the hot wire was coming into the circuit and where the neutral goes they both go to there's 12 pins and I wasn't sure what was what and a bunch of different colored wires so I went through here and uh, some of the other things that I noticed were that uh, uh, there's a door sensing switch so like unless pin 11 and 12 go together like a switch is closed this thing won't work so luckily I was able to find the schematic and go through it and figure everything out. So if you have a GE microwave panel and you want to set up either a clock or uh, a time circuit like this, um, I, I'm going to show you how to do it in this video. I'll walk you through the wiring. The way this thing works is you put in your cook time. So I'll, I'll do time cook and I'm going to put in 10 seconds and when we hit start 
uh, I don't know if you can see it but now it's counting backwards and I have this light up here and it's it's counting down it's at five four three two one and everything's working it says it's ready um, it'll continue to beep like your microwave so when you're done you know you can't open the door so you have to hit I don't have this thing bolted up but you gotta hit clear there we go and uh, it should be good to go so I have the unit laying on the bench and there's actually uh, two circuit boards there's one up there and there's a smaller one here this is called a filter board and basically it has a fuse on it and uh, because the uh, power coming in your house fluctuates a little bit this is supposed to smooth that out so that you have a consistent 120 volt AC current uh, going through this board so what I have is basically a plug that comes into this board so the uh, the neutral ties in here and then over on the the back side you have your hot wire coming in there then it goes through the board and through the fuse there's a ceramic fuse there and then coming out of there you basically have a hot wire and you have a neutral wire now luckily this board I don't know if you could see it but it, it was labeled so that was pretty easy to figure out and also uh, I did have the schematic that has this filter board listed as well now as far as wiring up the uh, circuit board once once you know you have it figured out it's really not that hard to do there are 12 pins okay um, basically you have your neutral coming in to pin one so that's your neutral pin two there's nothing there pin three that's going to be your hot wire okay now if you just have your neutral going to one your hot going to three it's it's not going to work because there's the door sensing switches so what you need to do is you need to ground together or tie together I should say pins 12 and 11 so pins 11 and 12 they have grounded together and also there's a relay up here this relay uh, needs to be grounded together as well so you can see I have a wire that just goes up there that black wire it loops around and comes back it just has two clips on it um, so if you do that you ground together 11 and 12 and you ground together the relay uh, what that'll do is that'll give power to the clock so if you're just running a clock you're good to go what I did is I went a step further and I figured out which one of these pins gets hot or allows 120 volts to come out of it when the timer is going so uh, I believe I hooked mine up to pin 5 and that's the little turntable motor that rotates the tray in your microwave so that's my hot and then I take this hot wire off of there so that'll come on when uh, the the clock is switched on or the timer switched on and I also took a neutral so I, I wire nutted this white wire together um, can't find the wire nut here it is so I took a neutral which came right off this board and I also took this brown wire which goes to pin 5 and I just ran those two to my outlet on the other side and uh, the only other thing I did was ground it to the board so it's a pretty simple little project if you know what to do if you don't know what to do and you're trying to figure it out you're going to be scratching your head it took me about I don't know 25 minutes so I figured out what was going on here so that's that's basically it and uh, I'm gonna mount it on the wall and uh, I don't know I'm set the clock I might paint it who knows so to mount it to the wall and just uh, I put this little board on the wall and that's gonna fit right up top in between here and I'm gonna screw those two screws down into it and I have an outlet over there to plug it in so as you can see I have it up on the wall it seems to be good um, 
I'm pretty happy with it right now. Here's what I'm going to do. This box here, this is actually a uh, thing I made. It's a battery charger. It's actually a DC, <coughs> excuse me, a DC power supply. So sometimes you charge batteries and you don't want to charge them that long. So you can turn the power on to that for um, maybe like an hour at a time. And uh, then you don't have to stay out there and babysit it or go back out later on to turn it off if you're trying to charge something. I also <coughs> have my uh, soldering iron plugged in. Um, you know, it's just a safety hazard. So now when I use my soldering iron, I'll just set the timer and... Uh, you know, when I'm done soldering, I can hit the switch and turn it off. But if I forget, it'll go off on its own. So uh, I think the thing's going to be pretty useful. And it might be a project that's uh, worth doing. And the thing I like most about it is I will always use it because it has the clock on it. And it's, it's a very accurate clock. It's not like the battery-powered clocks that I have out in the shop. So... Anyhow, um, I'm double wide six. I have a bunch of uh, random repair videos, some small engine stuff, and uh, a lot of little project videos. So you can check out my channel and look around, and let me know what you think. Um, recently, uh, YouTube has switched over to Google Plus, and just to let you guys know, I've been getting a lot of comments that are coming in um, under YouTube, but I can't respond to some of them because uh, y you need to put the comments in Google Plus. So I would recommend to people to number one, try and keep your name. Don't change your name because I can see who my subscribers are and who is leaving comments because it's going to ask you if you want to change it to your real name. So uh, you know I keep mine as Double Wide Six, and um, you know if you're gonna. If you're the type of person that likes to leave comments, um, sign up for Google+. Plus. You can keep your name. It's not a big deal. And Google or YouTube is not going to switch anything back. So you might as well kind of get on the bandwagon. Um, you know, so far I'm starting to get used to the new system. And, you know, it's going to be all right. So sign up. It's not a big deal. Most people uh, are kind of getting the message. So, uh Thanks for watching, and as I said, I'm Double Wide Six, and uh, you can give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, let me know what you think. Have a good one.